This is Shara Kanzler, editor of Fast Casual, and you are listening to Navigating COVID-19. Welcome back, everyone, to Navigating COVID-19, a podcast about how restaurants are responding to the coronavirus pandemic. Today, we'll be looking at a variety of stories. Our first one, we'll look at an NRA study on COVID-19's real impact on restaurants. We'll also be looking at one on how restaurant chain sales went down 43% this week, how Starbucks is concerned reopening some of its cafe location, how Shake is returning some of its PPP funds. We'll also be looking at how Taco for Life is examining how the virus will change business permanently. And finally, we'll look at how Chick-fil-A is encouraging customers to use mobile instead of cash. But before we get into all of that, enjoy a quick message from our sponsor. Now more than ever, restaurants demand secure, reliable, and cost-effective IT networks to keep business flowing. While you focus on the health of your patrons and staff during this crisis, NetSurian is here to support you with a managed network service purpose-built for restaurants. Learn more at netshurian.com forward slash restaurants. First, let's look at the NRA study. A National Restaurant Association study reveals the impact from the coronavirus pandemic will be worse than initially projected, with restaurants having lost $30 billion in March alone and on track to lose $50 billion this month. The economic loss nationwide by the end of the year will be $240 billion, according to a press release on the study results. The industry has lost two-thirds of its workforce as well. The findings spurred the NRA to create a response plan, and the group is calling Congress to support its blueprint for recovery. The $240 billion plan, called RFIRF, is a grant-based program that would support ongoing operation expenses and provide support for rehiring and treating the workforce. It would provide relief for the second largest private sector employer, according to the NRF, as the restaurant industry is larger than ground transportation, airlines, spectator sports, and railroads combined. The grants will be available on a quarterly basis via an online portal housed on the IRS website, and restaurant owners could apply for their prior year-on-year's quarterly gross revenue through the end of 2020. The survey revealed that more than 60% of restaurant owners don't believe the federal relief programs created in the past two months, including the CARES Act, will help them keep workers on the payroll. The restaurant industry has been the hardest hit by the coronavirus mandates, suffering more sales and job losses than any other industry in the country. Executive Vice President of Public Affairs, Sean Kennedy, wrote in the NRA letter to bipartisan congressional leaders. On March 18, we wrote you warning of a bleak outlook for the restaurant industry as the pandemic was unfolding. One month later, we have a clear picture of the severe challenges that lie ahead and asked for a focused solution on behalf of an industry that is a vital part of every community, he added. Each of you has a favorite restaurant in your home state, one that exemplifies your culture, your cuisine, and your community. The restaurant industry epitomizes the American dream, but it is uniquely vulnerable to both the current circumstances and the future uncertainty of dining in an era of social distancing, Kennedy said. Now let's look at the story about restaurant chain transactions. Total restaurant transactions fell 43% during the second week in April, led by a continued drop in QSR transactions that reversed a more move towards stability, according to a report by the NPD Group. Total restaurant transactions appeared to be stabilizing during the week ended April 5th, slowing for a 42% decrease to 41% from the prior week, the report showed. But a further decrease in QSR transactions brought total restaurant transactions down 43% and the week ending April 12th compared to a year ago. The numbers reported today by NPD Group indicate that for QSR transactions alone for the week ending April 12th, the number was down 41% compared years year ago figures. I'm hesitant to make a big deal of this week over week decline because I think some volatility during a time of unprecedented disruption is expected, said David Portilatin, NPD food industry advisor and author of Eating Patterns in America and the release. With 5 million additional unemployment claims this week, we may begin to see consumers hesitant to spend at restaurants. In addition, while almost all U.S. restaurants' dining rooms are closed, there's mounting evidence that some units are closing altogether. 
Although much of the business can be absorbed by other locations, especially chains, it's reasonable to conclude that there's a point at which units closures would erode volume further. On the other hand, we may see some lift from the government stimulus checks that have been issued. Full service restaurant chain transaction declines have fell at 79% for the last three weeks, NPD said. Mint scale slash family dining restaurant transactions fell 81% in the week ending April 12th, compared to a year ago. That's the same decline as the two weeks prior. Meanwhile, customer transactions at casual dining restaurant chains were down 77% that week, steady with the previous week. MPD tracks these changes via its weekly view of chain specific transactions and share trends for 70 quick serve, fast casual, mid scale, and casual dining chains. Now let's look at some Starbucks news. Starbucks is exploring the possibility of allowing some cafes to do take to take to go orders. According to Laird to employees from Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson, he said the company, which has been offering only drive through delivery service since March 21st, is transitioning to a monitor and adapt phase. While cafes and areas for the spread of COVID-19 has stalled or decline may reopen for to-go orders, others will gain hotspots will continue to serve customers only through delivery and drive through As we've experienced in China, we're now transitioning to a new phase that can best be described as monitor and adapt, Johnson wrote Thursday in the letter. This is a similar tactic used in China, where Starbucks closes location in January and re reopening stores last month in areas with low infection rates. About 95% of China's Starbucks cafes are now open, Johnson wrote in a separate letter issued April 8th. We're leveraging our experience in China to inform our COVID-19 response strategy in the U.S., he sent the letter. Although the virus did not begin to materially impact U.S. businesses' results until mid-March, we took progressive steps to contain the spread of the virus starting in late February. Those steps include elevating cleaning and sanitizing protocols, temporary closing mall stores and other locations with high levels of customer congregation, shifting to a to-go model, and eventually restricting company operations to drive-through and delivery channels. Johnson said leaders would use the local status of the health crisis, guidance from officials, community sentiment, and operational readiness of each location to inform the brand's reopening decisions. Now more than ever, restaurants demand secure, reliable, and cost-effective IT networks to keep business flowing. While you focus on the health of your patrons and staff during this crisis, NetSurian is here to support you with a managed network service purpose-built for restaurants. Learn more at netsurian.com forward slash restaurants. Starbucks, which is extending catastrophe paid leave for baristas until the end of May, is also giving working employees an extra $3 per hour. Like most restaurant brands, however, the pandemic has hit Starbucks where it counts, the bottom line. Comparable same-store sales in the U.S. began to decline March 12th and steadily worsened as we temporarily closed more stores and traffic slowed in response to the rise in shelter-in-place mandates and social distancing requirements across the country, Johnson said. Then the last week of the month, comparable store sales declined, stabilized in the range of negative 60 to negative 70 percent. With 44 percent of U.S. company operated locations operating, most under modified store hours, primarily through the drive through channel. At quarter end, 58% of U.S. company operated stores were drive through locations, of which 76% were open. Additionally, about 55% of U.S. licensed stores remained open. Notwithstanding the very strong performance for the first 10 weeks of the quarter, comparable store sales in the U.S. were down approximately 3% in quarter two versus the prior year, reflecting the very rapid onset of COVID-19 business impacts in the first three weeks of the quarter. Johnson said, however, they expect the impact of COVID-19 to be temporary. Starbucks shares, which have had a market value of $85.2 billion, have fallen 17% this year. Now let's look about at Shake Shack. Although Shake Shack received a $10 million loan for the Paycheck Protection Program, the burger chain is giving it back. The $349 billion stimulus package ran out of money last week, which sparked resentment over the distribution of funds. Several media outlets, for example, report that a lot of the money was given to large chain restaurants, hotels, and publicly traded corporations instead of small businesses, according to CNN. The news inspired Shake Shack CEO Randy Garuti and Chairman Danny Meyer to return its funding, staying money in open layer that the PPP, PPP had unfairly left out smaller businesses because the program was extremely confusing. Shake Shack was fortunate last Friday to be able to access the additional capital we needed to ensure our long-term stability through an equity transaction in public markets, they wrote. We're thankful of that, 
We've decided to immediately return the entire $10 million PPP loan we received last week to the SBA so that those restaurants who need it the most can get it now. Garuti and Meyer are also asking the SBA to increase funding to the program and want it to assign a local bank to work with each applicant to ease the process. President Donald Trump said Sunday that officials will continue to negotiate with the Democrats to get our great workers and small businesses all over the country taken care of. Shake Shack has furloughed or laid off 1,000 employees and cut pay for top executives. It released preliminary first quarter results Friday morning, showing a 12.8% drop in the same store sales in the quarter from the year-ago period, as the pandemic led to a steep 28.5% drop in comparative sales during the month of March. Now let's look at Tacos for Life and how their co-founder believes what the permanent effects of COVID-19 will be. COVID-19 has caused restaurants of all sizes to focus on to-go models, and Tacos for Life is no exception. The 16 unit chain based in Arkansas is surviving because of its nimbleness, and co-founder Austin Samuelson doesn't expect to reverse his carry-out focus when the pand pandemic is in the rearview mirror. We are able to pull our family pack menu options together within seven days, and they're already a huge hit among our guests, he said during an interview with Fast Casual. We've continued to develop this menu item even after COVID. Another positive that's come out of this is the rapid go growth of our digital channel offering. It's up from 3% to 25%. The entire restaurant industry has already shifted to a focus on off-premise options prior to COVID, and this only accelerated when we are headed, where we are headed as an industry, Sam Wilson said. Even when dine-in does open back up, I think guests will continue to want quality food conveniently in the comfort of their own home. That's not the only permanent market the pandemic is leaving on the restaurant industry, according to Samuelson, who said he's already seen a need for additional guest education. Our customers want to know more about the safety precautions we take, how we prepare the food, etc. he said. Customers cared about those things before COVID, but now is even more of a priority. Transparent communication is the most critical piece of the brand-customer relationship. These are things that were a priority before COVID, but there is more attention being paid to this now more than ever. We don't see this changing. Marketing is another area forever changed by the pandemic. Tacos for Life, for example, has stripped most of the non-essential messaging is focusing on communicating its core mission, values, and services to customers. Showing our guests gratitude and thanking them for the simple things has always been a priority for our brand since we are mission-based. But I think you'll continue to see more brands increase this kind of awareness once we are past the pandemic, he said. Although Tacos for Life is closed in only one location, it didn't have a drive through and the primary demographic is made up of local college students and faculty, the rest remain open despite a major drop in sales. Our numbers are down significantly, and our goal is to be above the industry average week to week, said Samuelson, who declined to reveal the chain's specific numbers. Black Blotch Intelligence reported last week that the fast casual sector is down 51%. And while Samuelson had to furlough some workers each restaurant, as well as at the corporate level, the remainder of the team is not taking a pay cut. We've already been able to bring several furloughed team members back because sales are slightly up, he said. We have a remarkable community of employees. The majority of our younger staff members volunteered offering to put a hold in their hours in order to protect the team members who depend on their hours to make a living. Tacos for Life, like, many small, like so many other small businesses, applied for the federal government's Paycheck Protection Program. Luckily, the chain received funding before it dried up. From where we're seeing, the package should be very beneficial and is the bridge we needed to make it to the other side of this, Samuelson said. Without it, the conversation would be different. His only frustration has been the confusion and lack of clarity. Every business seemed to have a slightly different interpretation of it, Samuelson said. Although Tacos for Life is awaiting the government's reopening plan before it welcomes guests back to its dining room, Samuelson and his team are discussing how the experience will look. We will follow the CDC and government recommendations very closely, and we will take extra precautions to ensure our team members and guests are comfortable and safe, he said. And last, let's take a look at a story about Chick-fil-A. A number of Chick-fil-A locations have stopped accepting cash or encouraging its customers to use alternate payment methods as the restaurant chain takes a number of steps to slow the spread of the coronavirus. Chick-fil-A stores in Indiana, Florida, Maryland, Georgia, and Virginia are learning customers about the policy changes via Facebook pages or on the web, according to a Business Insider report. The brand has posted inside in its COVID-19 response, and team members are being encouraged to ask for payment via credit or debit card or through the company's mobile app. The actions follow World Health Organization statements that raise questions over whether the virus can spread using paper bills or other currency. A number of states have stated the coronavirus could linger on services like countertops, store handles, and other services. Spokesperson for the company was not immediately available for comment. Thank you so much for joining us today for Navigating COVID-19, and please stay tuned for future episodes. Uh, once again, I am Bradley Cooper, and thank you.